Hello everyone. As the summer is ending, we can feel the breeze of autumn in the air. It's colder in the morning and we have more and more misty and foggy days. The smells are changing as well as some of the leaves on the plants and trees. So this change of season invites us to slow down and to add one or two layers of clothes while going outside. It also tells us that lighting up a nice fire would feel cozy, warm and comforty as we slowly get used to the cool air again. It also means that we are approaching the end of the foraging season. There are still plants shooting new growths right now, which is surprising, but it rejoices us as it will give us an extra wild food to store for the winter. And knowing that the cold season is coming soon, we still have lots of firewood to fetch to make sure that we are all stocked for the colder months. This time of the year is also a good moment to cook warm soups and spicy stews and curries. It's a moment to start going inward and let go of the quicker pace that summer brings us. The fire feels so good because it's very cold in the house and it's actually getting quite cold outside also. So it's our first fire of the year. So is it cold in the house? It's a little cold in the house. <laughs> so that's why we're what, it's light. It's a little early already. Yeah. Please. Mm, maybe we're going to have some nice days after that. Let's see. Yep. But it's good weather to get outside and get some firewood cut, so we'll do that today. Exactly. It's a very foggy day and I'm gonna go see if I can find any more of these uh, lepiotas, the mushrooms that we've got yesterday. They are down on our property, so as you can see, it's very humid in the air. Very often the fog here is actually clouds because of the altitude we live at. Um, so it's very misty and cold and humid, which we're not so used to, but we we'll take any, any humidity is welcome here. So one thing I love about Alton is that the dandelion comes back to life. So you get lots of new growth, new plants. And uh, we love to put them in our smoothie. So another thing that I notice comes out again sometimes at Alton is the duck leaves. So when they don't have red dots like this, they can be used in the pot herb. It's full of vitamin C and also it removes the bad acids from the stomach. And it has quite a neutral taste. It's a little tangy. But yeah, I'm always happy when I find a bunch of them at this time of the year. more duck. The best leaves would be the ones that are still rolled in the middle and also they have a very slimy glutinous kind of um, liquid on it but this is how they grow so it's actually very good. And this is the major plants of the of duck. So sometimes some leaves will grow again at the base of it. And even these seeds, they can be used for cooking. 
except that the shaft is very difficult to remove so so I have to experiment with that but it makes them easy to recognize for the next year because they will grow normally at the same place what we've got so far. Always more to discover. And I look around. I also see one just right there. That I haven't seen before. I must say that sometimes I let them grow one day or two since they're on our land. We know that nobody's gonna pick them. So it allows us to have more pounds. I have to come back tomorrow because our basket, my basket is full. So this is the result in about half an hour. It's probably another three pounds, maybe three and a half because it's pretty heavy. Yeah, it's pretty cold outside right now, so very dirty, very humid, and ah, my fingers are feel a little numb. All this beautiful wild food requires lots of cleaning, dehydrating, cooking, storing to be preserved for the winter, so that's what I'm going to work on right now. And with greens, the best way to keep them from wilting is to put them in ice cold water. So this water is very cold right now. And then they kind of reshape into something very fresh and then they preserve very well in the fridge after for at least up to a week or two. So that's a good tip to know if you have some greens from the farmer's market that keeps on wilting quickly. So maybe try that at home. This 
sun is finally out after two days of fog and clouds and mist. mushrooms and cook them and what we love to do normally with the this kind of mushroom particularly because they need to be boiled before and you don't keep the boiling water so we love to just cook them in water drop the water and vacuum seal them and freeze them so let's see the only problem right now is that we're missing we're lacking play space in our freezer so might we might dehydrate some of them or try to find space i don't know exactly but still i'm gonna cook most of them and see what what we do with it after Surges to take, so that's gonna be my hydration liquid right now as I'm cutting these mushrooms. We have 3.5 pounds of uh, mushrooms here, shaggy parasol, and we will add boiling water on it, boil it for about 20 minutes, and then throw the water and just keep the mushroom that we will cool down and vacuum seal and freeze. Also got some sun on your face. You look like it a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Me too, it's a little red. So the, the sun came out, so we were excited, and then we went outside to just soak it in, and well, it shows. <laughs>
Et voilà. <laughs> bon. Howdy folks, great to be back with you again. As the seasons are shifting, temperatures are dropping, we're beginning to feel a little bit more internal and come inside and thought we'd share a little bit of that with you. Yeah, and we have this beautiful fire running. It's the first week that we use a wood stove for this season. So it's fun. I enjoy it. It's kind of cozy. It invites to be more introspective and stay inside a little bit more. But we still have lots of work to do because feeling the cold coming in and like the smells in the air are changing and it's kind of more humid and colder in the morning for sure and at night. Uh, so we have really this awareness that we still have lots of firewood to cut actually. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, we feel a little bit behind in our uh, collecting and storing of firewood. So. You know, you'll see in this episode that uh, we spent quite a bit of time fetching quite a bit of wood and, and it's good. You know, it's that sense of urgency is certainly there. The temperature is dropping quickly, so we, we certainly have got to get it done. Yeah, that's the feeling you get when you follow more the season. You really feel that there are things to wrap up before the colder season. And we get this a little bit also with preserving our mushrooms and preserving everything we're picking up outside, picking outside right now. We yeah we need to dehydrate them or like cook them so we can store them in the freezer or so that's it's been a little bit of our things this week mm -hmm. yeah emily's been uh i've been working on some other projects so emily's been taking care of a couple of the final foraging ventures for the year and uh collecting the last bit of mushrooms and the last bit of berries and the last bit of greens that we've had the opportunity to collect this year um i don't think we'll have much more actually rose hips because you don't harvest those until after the first frost so that'll be our our final forage of the year but you know for right now that's what we're working on yeah that's kind of going towards the end of a season for sure and um, despite the cooler sometimes morning where we really have to wrap up and like light up a fire we still have sometimes during the day very warm temperature coming in, so it's been like a little bit like this, but that's a part of the transition from summer to autumn. Yeah, the, it, I mean, the nights right now are, you know, upper 30s, low 40s, upper 30s, but daytimes we're still seeing, you know, 50s and 60s, you know, so uh, fires are more just for the evening, but it, it provides for a a warm romantic evening. Mm, yeah. Dinners by the fire. Exactly. <laughs> There's something so magical about the return of the wood stove. Mm, yes. <laughs> I, I mean, we both have had many winters in our life, but truly, guys, having a wood stove really makes a difference. And at the same time, it can keeps you it can keep you inside much more than it would if you had more moderate temperature, I guess, in the house. But now we can like just heat it very warm and it, it's cozy so then it becomes more difficult to go outside but that's another story <laughs> mm -hmm. i'm a little bit of a bear i tend to hibernate in the winter time and m does as well so it it suits us well yeah you know, not everybody's that way but you yeah know. yeah i don't know if it's hibernation but it's definitely sometimes like you know when you wake up in the morning and the house is cold and it takes you two hours to get warm because you have to do things around the house because of course we could just sit by the fire but there are things like we love doing our smoothies in the morning and breakfast and lunch and prepare lots of things for the day so we spend time more in the kitchen where it's cooler um so when it takes you two hours to get warm <laughs> you, the ne the last thing you want to do is like go outside if it's cold so anyway but we will adjust it's just the beginning it's the transition um, but it's been fun mm. you know like autumn brings all these it keeps on coming to my mind the smells there's really something different in the smells and it reminds me of all the autumn of my life it's nice we start going in nature and there's like a little bit of change of colors on the leaves on plants on the ground or in the trees so and oh yeah and one one other thing that we've been doing a lot lately is you know it's kind of the time for soups and stew and curry so lots of time in the kitchen also and our kitchen is very small, yeah. <laughs> Saying to make reserve for the winter. Uh, but our kitchen is very small. You saw it in some footages, I guess, like in our previous videos. But 
Uh, so we would love one day to be able to film a little bit more because really that's such a passion and I think it could be an inspiration for some of you, no matter how you eat. Uh, I think all these tubes and curries, and this is just something comforting. Uh, comforting? Comforting? Comforting, yeah. Comforting. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, eventually, I know in our tropical home we have a much bigger kitchen because we thought ahead of time that that's something we wanted to do, to have like, just to be able to film so design the kitchen ahead of time to to be able to have um create footage and share that as part of our content with you all um you know that's a plant-based whole food plant-based diet is is how we eat and is a huge part of our lifestyle and something that we'd love to share more with you guys yeah to come it's to be continued so with all of that said uh super grateful to sit with you all and share a little bit of our inner world with you again. Please stay tuned, uh, like and subscribe. And I think Emily shared in the last conversation that we had with you all too, uh, please offer anything that you may feel from anything that we've shared. We'd love to hear from you guys. We'd love to engage in the conversation and uh, love for that to continue. Yeah. Thank you so much for being there. Yeah, thanks love for being you all. there. Love Take you care. all. Enjoy this beautiful fall time. Yeah, enjoy the fall time. All the very best. Yeah, and if you are somewhere on the planet where there's no autumn, enjoy whatever season you are in. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. There is something that we find very satisfying about fetching our own firewood in our forest land. Cutting our own wood for us has instilled a sense of deep gratitude for the land and for the resources that we have readily available around us. It also contributes to a sense of self-sufficiency, which we embrace more and more with every year that passes. Plus it keeps us attuned to the changing seasons and it's a good physical exercise as well. And since we are only taking wood from dead standing trees or the ones that are already laying on the ground, it also helps to clean the forest. All this material is, as you can see, already there, available and free of use. So we are always very grateful for each piece of wood that we pick around our property. So we're done up here and now we're going to go work on the next tree that's right down here.
the rest of three trees that we cut last week. Awesome. So we are needing another battery because it's electric powered chainsaw. So we always have an extra battery that we can switch. We can swap them and recharge one or the other. on the outside maybe on the other side like if you look at the other end i can see there's they're a not the wood ants they're not the wood ants sorry i did not realize you had your things on i said if you look at the other end maybe this yeah but it's not bad Why are you checking the wood? For the wood ants, the mm. carpenter ants. Yeah, because we don't want to sure bring that in the house. Make sure that we don't bring them up near the house and, uh, and stack them in our wood pile as well. As yeah, right.
this will work. I don't know how we filled that thing up a few times. Alu masala with some kind of biryani made with cauliflower rice. Food is amazing, man. I'm eating a delicious biryani that my lovely wife just made for us. Mm. So, so grateful for her all of her artistry in the kitchen. Mm. So you like it? It's delicious. Oh, nice. Because mm. it's a new recipe, so. Merci beaucoup, Rama Delicio Europa. Mm. You're welcome.